Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikita and on this channel, we like to diversify our reading and focus on the inclusion of BIPOC stories, so which is Black Indigenous People of Color stories and fiction and in real life. So you can expect a lot of book chats, book recommendations, as well as my podcast called Brown People Problems. So for today's video, since I am fairly new to the world of YouTube, I wanted to do a tag that's been going around and that's the booktube newbie tag. I actually heard about it from another fellow small YouTuber, uh, the evening reader, Priscilla. I'll, I'll leave her channel down below. She's, she's great. And I saw her do it and I figured, you know, that's a great way to kind of just introduce myself and build a community of like-minded readers. So question number one, I've got all the <clears throat> questions here on my iPad. <clears throat> Question number one, why did you start this channel? Uh, so like I sort of said in the introduction, um, I am an avid reader, like you can probably see from all the books around me. And I have, you know, sort of really wanted to read more diversely. So include a lot more BIPOC stories, a lot more South Asian stories and authors in my reading. And I figured it was very hard for me to find other recommendations on YouTube that were very inclusive of different, whether it was like ethnic communities, racial communities, LGBTQ community. So I figured that actually this is a gap that I can fill. I am an avid reader. I try to balance out uh, what I'm reading. So for every uh, white author, I do try to include um, in my TBR uh, a BIPOC author just to open myself up to a lot of different experiences and a lot of different stories from around the world. And I figured, hey, if I'm the one who's looking for it, <clears throat> probably other people are looking for the same kind of book recommendations and community on YouTube as well, and hence this channel. And I also needed another platform to share my podcast called Brown People Problems. If you haven't already checked it out, I will definitely link it up here uh, for you as well as below in the description box, but I have a weekly podcast where I invite guests to really just chat about what it looks like to navigate life while being brown while maybe whether you are Indian American or you know South Asian American South Asian Canadian uh, or other parts of the world what does it look like what do our experiences look like what do our stories look like so if you're interested in something like that definitely go check out the podcast it's also obviously available on all podcasting platforms okay enough of a plug <laughs> question number two what fun or unique thing do you bring to youtube so again i think i really bring a focus on bipoc stories uh, bipoc authors people of color authors um there are, I think, you know, thankfully a lot more black voices now in literature. There's a lot more indigenous voices now in literature that maybe when I was growing up, uh, we didn't have. I'm still struggling to find a lot of South Asian voices in literature. And I think now in the last few years, the tide has really started to turn. So I honestly love reading books from people all around the world. That's actually one of the ways that I find my travel destinations is um, I love to read books that are set in different parts of the world and from different perspectives and that. So when I visit that place, I take the book that introduced me to that place and really made me want to go there. And I think it's just such a lovely way to connect with the world. It's such a lovely way to diversify your understanding of different communities. And, and it's such a great way to just know more, learn more, experience more. So I really hope to bring that to you too. All right, question number three. What are you most excited about in starting your channel? So I have already started my channel a few videos in, so it's a bit of a late question, but hmm, I guess what I feel most excited about would be creating that like diverse community here and finding other like-minded you know not just like readers but also people who want to diversify their reading want to branch out uh you know really want to form a community where others can introduce me to some books that i've been missing out on and stories that i've been missing out on and 
likewise. Why do you love reading? Oh, that is such a general question. Gosh, um, I have been reading for a really, really long time now. I think I started reading when I started reading fiction when I was like five, six, seven, around that age. And some of my first uh, books were um, all the Enid Blittons, uh, and eventually turned into like Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, Famous Five. I think all of those 90s <laughs> um, typical kind of like go-to books, a lot of like goosebumps and things like that. So I honestly really loved reading mainly because it just allowed me at least at that time, like an opportunity to get away, uh, even if it was like in my mind and it just always really fascinated me to find other people and learn about different places. So I was quite a sick child growing up. So it was very hard for me to engage in sports um, or go out and make friends. I was very much at home. And so reading fiction really gave me this like sense of community that I had. I found friends and characters. I found places I wanted to go to. I found a bit of an escape, but also like that normalcy. That's how my love for reading started. Um, over time, I definitely fell off the wagon a little bit in high school uh, when we just had to read a lot, and you know, I, I became a lot more social in high school, and I definitely got back to reading in my twenties. And now, being in my 30s, I really enjoy reading because this is my form of, you know, relaxation. So, and we all already know that reading has been scientifically proven to reduce stress significantly um, and turn off that stress response system in the body and the nervous system. Um, but for me, this is really just my way of relaxing. So after a long day of work or, you know, just like a difficult day, you know, someone else may want to go for a run or may want to go for a walk. And while I enjoy those things too, like the number one thing on my list is grabbing a book, cocooning myself in, in this space in my library and, and just reading. I think it brings me a lot of peace. It brings me a lot of joy. It brings me a lot of perspective. Um, and like I said, it's just such a lovely way to, to travel in your imagination, to to meet different people, meet different characters. I love it. What book or series got you into reading? So yeah, like I was saying, when I was really, really young, uh, the, all the Enid Blittons, I think I used to, I have read all of them, uh, those short stories that Enid Blitton used to have. And I had all of those physical books as well. So that really got me into reading. Um, and eventually back in my twenties, what got me reading was um, thrillers. So. I think I have it here, but I believe, um, I don't even remember exactly how old I was, but I was definitely somewhere in my 20s when Gone Girl came out by Gillian Flynn. Classic, you know, first of its kind of twisted um, thriller, uh, at least for me, it was first of a kind. And when I encountered that, that really got me to fall back in love with reading. So I had this huge phase of a few years where all I read were thrillers, murder mystery so you know you name a thriller a psychological thriller i read it um, that really got me into reading now i'm in a space where i'm diversifying a lot more of what i'm reading so not just my authors or my stories like bipoc stories but i'm also diversifying the genres that i read so I'm reading a lot more contemporary fiction now i'm reading a lot more romance now i like to read science fiction is something I still can't get on board with but you know introducing a lot of fantasy introducing uh, a lot of historical fiction i never use like historical fiction and in the last two years that's you know slowly climbed up to be like my number one genre of choice what questions would you ask your favorite youtubers Oof. gosh um Hmm, what questions would I ask my favorite YouTubers? I would of course want to ask everyone what's like their number one book of all time that 
they just they can't put away that they absolutely love that they would recommend to everyone that's something that always makes me curious uh, who someone's favorite author makes me really curious and especially my booktubers my favorite booktubers i would want to ask them how much of what they're reading are they actually kind of connecting with and are they absorbing because i think as much as i love this new world of booktube and book talk and bookstagram i think it's also created a bit of an unhealthy like need to just binge books so just get through book after book after book after book as fast as possible and while i really understand that like hunger to kind of know what happens there's obviously also benefit in slowing down and reading and really connecting with the book and i don't know if a lot of people who read a lot or read really really fast are doing that like are you just reading the book just to know like just to add to your count of books that you've read and stories that you've read or do you actually find yourself connecting with what you're reading and how much of the time are you really connecting? I think there was a really lovely quote that I read somewhere and I don't remember who it was by, but <clears throat> the quote said, it's not about how many books you can get to, it's about how many books can get to you. And I thought that was really lovely and I really like to hold that in mind because sometimes I can also just wanna binge books. So I think that's something that I like to hold in mind is okay, it's not it's not a race, <laughs> it's not a competition about who reads more. It's about how many books do you connect to yourself? What challenges or hurdles do you have to starting your channel? Uh, one of the things that I have noticed has been difficult um, or a little bit more challenging than I thought was getting traffic to my YouTube channel. So hence this tag, hopefully this is going to bring a lot of you here. Uh, but I love creating content. Uh, I'm a creative person. It comes to me very naturally. So I know a lot of other people have had that uh, problem with creating content, but not for me. For me, it's more of the, the being seen and getting eyes on my content so that's something that i have found a little bit challenging not that i'm really in it for the numbers but i think it would feel a little bit more validating and like affirming and i really want to build a sense of community here so it'd be nice to have a, a community and that's gonna take more people coming here and um enjoying what i'm sharing um uh, when did you start reading already answered that that was five six seven around that time where do you like to read? Ooh, this is a good question. I think currently in my life, I like to read in this room. So this is my home office slash my library. And I have a, a really nice, uh, massive chair here with an ottoman and a throw. And this is my top spot for reading uh, as of right now. But in the summer, I definitely like to just go out to the park or by the lake and take like my little picnic basket and just read. To be honest, I can read anywhere. I often read at work in between appointments or when I'm driving or I listen to audiobooks. So that's nice. But in the summer, I like to get out as much as I can with my Kobo or with the book that I'm reading. But if I'm at home, this space. It's definitely nice it's just something about being surrounded by books it's lovely and the second last question here is what kind of books do you like to read i think i've already answered that i like to read a lot more contemporary fiction now historical fiction i'm starting to enjoy just like romance and what you know people like to call women's fiction i don't agree with that title i think that's possibly a way to just really like um seclude a lot of other people from wanting to approach this like the oh, a fiction is fiction it's for everyone it shouldn't be gendered but anyway women's fiction is something that i've really enjoyed recently um a lot of cozy mysteries i'm actually really enjoying cozy mysteries i always used to love these like darker thrillers and like psychological thrillers and murder mysteries but now i'm liking the cozy element to it so uh the Dialy for Aunties type of books, um, or I'm reading now Home Wreckers by Mary Kay Andrews, I wanna say. Uh, so, you know, that type of genre where it has like a little bit of like comedy, it has a little bit of romance, it has a little bit of a, fiction, uh, of a, of a mystery. I'm really enjoying that. 
And lastly, what does your book collection look like? So, as you can see, I have a lot of books here um, on my physical shelf. I think I have about, I want to say close to 300 behind me. Like you can see, like these are like, these are really cramped. Like there's no space at all. So in order to compensate for that space, I've got myself a book cart. This is my lovely, lovely book cart. Let me see if I can show it to you. But this is what it looks like. It's got, you know, a lot of space um, for books. So, so I'm really enjoying having this here. Um, I do want to build more shelves. So I have uh, in my guest bedroom, I want to build some more shelves so I can transport some books up there. Um, but yeah, this is what my collection looks like. I also read on my Kobo a lot. So if you don't know, I've talked a lot about my Kobo. I'll link it down below. It's really just like a Canadian version of Kindle, my e-reader. It's great. I have a lot of books on there. I use Audible as well to listen to books, but primarily for me, like nothing beats, you know, like a nice, nice floppy paperback for me. I'm not a hard book, hardcover person. Some people love hardbacks. That is just not me. I don't know if there's any of you listening who enjoy paperbacks more than hardbacks, but like, oh, like there's just something about like a nice floppy paperback. It's the best. So, but obviously like a physical book, there's nothing like it. But obviously when I'm traveling or whatnot, like I, I don't like carrying many of my books with me because I like to keep them in a nice condition and I don't want them to get all bent and damaged so yeah well that's it everyone that is my version of the booktube newbie tag um if you enjoyed this let me know let me know like your thoughts down below if uh, you think there's any books that you have in mind even though there's been a couple um subscribers who've been sharing some really good book recommendations with me so my tbr list just keeps growing but if you have any of the books for me that you want me to read or like talk about here please let me know and yeah hopefully you enjoyed this and i'll see you in my next one bye